sheet metal defaults are used to apply different styles to the active sheet metal part. The sheet metal defaults control the sheet metal rule, material, unfold rule, and the thickness of the sheet metal and all of the changes made to the defaults are local to the part. In this lesson, I'd like to create a sheet metal default that I'll use for the parts created in the rest of this course. To get started, from the Sheet Metal ribbon, Setup Panel, I'll click the icon for Sheet Metal Defaults, or right-click in the Graphics area and select it from the Marking menu. When I do, the Sheet Metal Defaults dialog box appears. Here, I can specify a sheet metal rule, a material type, material thickness, and the unfold rule. I'll begin by editing the sheet metal rule. This selection box is where I can select from two default rules, one for imperial units and another for metric. If any custom rules were saved, they would appear here as well. Let's add a new rule. To do this, I'll click on the pencil icon. This opens the style and standard editor where I can edit existing defaults or create new rules. Notice that there are two sheet metal categories here in the browser, sheet metal rule and sheet metal unfold. We'll be creating a new sheet metal rule and discuss the unfold options later on. To create a new rule, I'll first select the existing sheet metal rule named default, then click the new button. This will create a copy of this existing rule to be used as the basis for creating this new rule. Here in the New Local Style dialog box, I'll name this style 16GA316SS for 16 gauge 316 stainless steel and click OK. Notice the new style appears below the sheet metal rule and the default settings are displayed here in the edit window. I'll make sure to double click on it in the browser to activate this new rule. The first parameter I'll change here in the Sheet tab is Material. I'll set this to Stainless Steel Austinetic, and then set the thickness to 0 0.0598 inch. For now, I'll keep the defaults in place for the Unfold Rule, Miter, Rip Seam Gap, Flat Pattern Bend Angle, and the Flat Pattern Punch representation. All of these settings can be edited later on in the sheet metal part. Next, I'll move on to the Bend tab. Here in the Relief Shape Selection box, I'll select the Round Shape from the drop-down. The Relief Width can be adjusted to reflect your shop tooling, but typically the minimum relief width for stainless steel is 1.5 times the material thickness. I'll type this equation in the text box. The Relief Depth drives the depth of the bend relief and minimum remnant defines an acceptable size for the minimum stock allowed to remain alongside of a bend relief cut. I'll keep the default equation for remnant and move on to the bend radius. I'd like to adjust this to be slightly larger than the thickness so the sheet metal bends reflect press break I'll be using to make the bends. I'll change this to thickness times 1.25. The last parameter to define here on the Bend tab is Bend Transition. This will define how the material is cut between the edges of two faces meeting at a bend. I'll set this to Trim to Bend, and Folded Geometry will result in a cut to the bend zone perpendicular to the bend feature. I'll click the Corner tab, and here I'll define the corner relief when two and three bends intersect. From the drop-down here, I can select a shape for the two-bend intersection. I'll choose Round, and for the relief size, I'll keep the default value of thickness times 4. I'll move on to the three-bend intersection and select the option for Round with Radius. For the relief radius here, I'll change the value to Bend Radius times 2. With the parameters defined for the new sheet metal rule, I'll click the Save button and the new sheet metal default is saved. Before wrapping up, I'll return to the Sheet tab to create a custom K-factor. I'll click the pencil icon to edit the Unfold rule. And here, you can see the default K-factor for Unfold style is selected.
So before making any edits here, I'll create a new local style so the default values are not overwritten. I'll click the new icon and name this unfold rule kfactor 16 ga 316 ss and click OK. Once again, I'll double-click on it in the browser to activate the new k-factor. Because I intend to use air bending to create bends in this part, I'll set the k-factor value to 0.39. The k-factor values can vary based on the bending machines used, so this value may be slightly different for you. I'll repeat this value for the spline factor value, and with the unfold parameter set, I'll click Save and return to the sheet metal rule I created earlier. I'll specify the new unfold rule and click Save once again. I'll activate the default sheet metal rule and click Done to close the style and standard editor. Back in the part model, I'll apply the new sheet metal rule. I'll expand the drop-down for the sheet metal rule and select the 316 stainless steel rule I just created. You'll see that the material thickness is updated, the correct material is shown, and the unfold rule appears. I'll click OK, and the model will update with the new sheet metal rule. To remove a sheet metal rule from the style and standard editor, I'll first activate the default rule because an active rule cannot be deleted. I'll right-click the rule and select Purge Style and Substyles. Click Yes, and the sheet metal rule as well as custom unfold k-factor are removed. Note that although these options and parameters are defined for the entire part by the sheet metal rule, you can override bend relief, corner relief, and unfold methods on individual features during feature creation. While each of these options can be modified when creating or editing a sheet metal feature, the style and standard editor must be used to edit shared styles.